Okay, it's coding time. The best part about this whole thing, although coding does get monotonous on a giant vehicle like this, especially since we're going to be doing all kinds of stuff, glass and trim and headlights and taillights and all that stuff. So uh, what we're going to be using is uh, G-Technic Crystal Serum Light. I've got uh, about a quarter of a bottle. You always look at your older bottle and just double check, make sure there isn't anything floating around in it. I find that if there's nothing floating around in it, then it should be good to go. And then we'll be topping with EXO. I just opened this uh, a couple of days ago when I did the wheels. So uh, I've got another package here in case I need it. Uh, but I've got a CarPro foam block, some CarPro suede applicators, some of the uh, Rag Company, uh, these are 240 GSM. I really like these inexpensive towels, uh, not just because they're cheap, but because they do really well at uh, coating removal. I want something not super high pile. I just, this is what I prefer to remove uh, coatings with. And I've got some, uh, some red towels here because I need to wipe down with isopropyl alcohol um, on the trim, IPA on the trim, and uh, some uh, CarPro eraser for all the paint. And then I have a pipette, which we'll need for, for CS, CSL application onto the pad. So let's get this set up, and then we'll prep the surface, and we'll get to coating. So the reason, you know, there's so many great coatings now, um, the reason why I like this one, I haven't tried them all, but I've tried a lot of them. The reason why I like this one so much is it, it's about as close to wax-like from a look and feel perspective as I've found. Um, you know, uh, I, I really liked Kamikaze and like Kamikaze ISM, uh, that esoteric cells. Uh, but the, the only thing I, the, the, the one thing that kind of pushed me over the edge with this uh, was that um, one, it's more readily available, uh, and then secondly, it um, it's not as it's not tacky. You know, it's very um, very slick. You know, and part of the fun for me, you know, I know there's no residual benefit to this uh, from a chemical resistance perspective, but I want to be able to run the back of my hand across the, the, the painted surface after I've spent all this all this work, and. Uh, I just really enjoy that slick feel. Uh, so this is slit, and uh, you can take a credit card or just use your fingernail to kind of jam this in place. Uh, this usually doesn't last very long for me. I have it on here for a little while, and then we pull it off. I'll actually probably use several applicators for this for this truck because it's so big. And we'll see. Once it kind of gets dirty, I'll flip it over and then then start from scratch. Uh, so let me tuck this in with, uh, let's use our fancy tool. I think we have these back in stock, but our tool that I use for pretty much everything on the planet these days is this skin wedge aircraft tool. So there we go. We've got our applicator ready to go. Before we start priming that and prepping that, let's get some gloves on. Let's get the surface cleaned, and we'll be good to go. It'll be interesting to see the uh, world supply of gloves as uh, everybody starts stockpiling them. There'll be a massive overage of uh, rubber gloves. So I don't think we'll ever run out of rubber gloves and masks ever again in the world, but we'll see. All right, step one, wipe it off. Yeah, I got Rex's. This is a Gorilla Gorilla stand from Home Depot. So I want to make sure to prep the surface really well. That way I get all the polished oils off, create a nice surface to bond to, but I also want to be careful that I don't scratch it up after all that work. You could use panel wipe. I like eraser because I can very easily spray it on the surface and not have to worry much about it doing any kind of damage or anything. Panel wipe from G-Technic is a whole lot more aggressive than eraser is. Let's just get the rest of that center there since I'm up here. I guess I should clean this out and just coat it, even though it's not perfect. Keep it, 
keep it clean under there. Not that it really matters. A couple of bubbled spots on the old Ford there. You know, I could clean out all these little individual louvers, but I don't think I'm gonna mess with that. All right, let's get moving. Let's see what kind of intelligent conversation I can make with you here today, because you've seen me do this a hundred times, and you're gonna see me do it a hundred times more. What can we talk about? What can I do to get people riled up? I'm gonna prime the pad. Just putting some coating on it. Just put a little bit extra to start, and we'll spread it around. So we take this and we spread it around, just like so. Again, it doesn't have to be done this way, all official, but you have to be careful with white because we really need to, to it's hard to see, you know, where you've been and where you're going on white. You know, I would be coating this, but I've got a new one coming someday. It was supposed to be here today, but Apparently not gonna happen. So, you know, we have the warehouse doing team A and team B. The most efficient thing so that my dad can run the show was to have it so that they do a, there's a, there's a half hour gap. So they're working seven days a week, but they're doing two shifts a day. You know, my dad and mom would be coming in at like six in the morning. But then Ted and his crew, they're doing uh, the late shift. I guess it'd be the late, not really the late shift, but the later shift from noon to 5.30. And then I see Ted hanging around till 6.37. So they're keeping up with your order. So thanks to all of you for continuing to keep us rolling. But we'll, you know, the, our orders are starting to get a little bit behind. But when I say behind, you know, we're normally like within the hour shipping the darn thing. So we're, you know, it takes a little bit more effort to stay on track. But in general, they're really on, really on it. So this, you don't have to rush. You don't have to worry about put, leaving it on for a certain period of time. You can just put it on and then wipe it off meaning i don't have to micromanage leaving it on for a certain period of time or i don't have to micromanage doing a small section and wiping it off especially since we've got some real serious humidity control in this garage i mean i've got a really high-end dehumidifier i'll probably get some jet filtration for this side too But yeah, it appears that we're good with the uh, with the the coating. I don't see any major rejection. Not that you'd really be able to tell all that well, but you'd still be able to kind of see if it was rejecting the old the old coating, or the the old coating was rejecting the new coating. Would be, I think you'd be able to see that. So we'll easily be able to do this whole truck with one bottle of CSL. The main thing is I want to get the edges here, but you know, you're not going to see this underneath the, the hood louvers, but can't hurt. We already have it off. I've already cleaned it up as much as I can clean it up, so I might as well coat it while we're at it. Okay, so I'm going to take two towels, one for the initial wipe, one for the secondary wipe, and then let the magic happen. That is nice. We have all of these areas nice and clean. What you'll find is that XO is a little harder to wipe. XO is harder to wipe than the uh, CSL. CSL comes off so clean and nicely. And a lot of it is if you do XO as your base coat, It'll come off quicker and easier. But there's a little bit of rejection from the from the CSL. Where you have to kind of work it in and then make sure it 
wipes off. Oh man, it's so good. Okay. The lights in here, you know, notice you don't see me using lights all that much. You'd be using lights a lot more if you didn't have the, the volume and quality of light that I have in HQ here. So you would need more, you'd be using your pen lights and stuff like that more. Yeah, so Team A and Team B are doing their thing. Um, all the guys are staying at home. We had a great meeting yesterday on Zoom with my coach, Rick. I'll do that pretty often where I'll have the leadership of OG meet with my coach and me and we kind of hash things out and uh, Rick will do a good job of calling us out on things that need to be called out instead of everybody just being nice nice we actually get get things done and so I created whole agenda of uh, I wanted to create I created a bunch of project managers and some projects that we need to do one of them is the OG spec gun and wand um, issue is we have the issue we have right now is inventory on those you know we can launch them but then no one will be able to buy them because we don't have enough of them and so trying to figure out what makes sense which packages do we put the uh, OG spec wand and gun on which ones do we not? Because don't, you don't have enough of them for everybody. So, and some people don't care. You know, I do get a lot of people purchasing things that don't know squat about Obsessed Garage. They just, someone told them to come here and buy. And they just, you know, they do the research and then make, make the purchase. A lot of them don't even do research. They just say, okay, he's got this. Click. Which is, means that I'm on to something from a brand perspective, not just a... YouTube channel, but an actual viable brand that people will buy from from now until the future in, and into the future. So, working on that, I generally my day looks like a uh, you know I'm typically typically wake up, edit. So I usually edit a little bit at night these videos that I'm making for you, like this one right now. So I'll edit a little bit at night, and then I'll finish it in the morning, upload it, sit there, wait for it to upload, answer anybody's emails, forward on, you know, to Kyle or Jeff or Mike or Bryce, whatever needs to be forwarded to them to do. Uh, check in with anybody if it needs to be checked in. Check on Chris with bills and cash flow. Check my bank statements and balances. Um, check in on Chase with the uh, PPP loan thing um, that uh, I'd like to shoot if I if I can get if I can get funding if I can borrow some money especially some of it's forgivable I'm going to use that to uh, probably hire a couple more people so the thing that's so fascinating is now I understand you know hospitality and some industries that um, had to shut down completely, like the airlines. But this whole bull crap, now they're using a new name, furlough. In other words, they didn't save enough money to pay the bills. I just can't imagine why they would need it. Maybe that's smart to do it preemptively quickly, but it just seems to me like a cop-out. Like, you couldn't float your people for a couple of months? It doesn't make any sense. I don't know. It just seems irresponsible to me. I guess... From a cash flow perspective, if you're not bringing in or those people aren't doing anything, I, I don't know. I would just try to figure out something for them to do. You see lots of companies innovating, creating, you know, if their industry is completely impacted and they're not able to do any work, they're figuring out something that they could provide value on, making masks or something. It just seems really odd to me. They're like a law firm lays everybody off. It's like, what? Did law all of a sudden stop? Or did you just using it as an opportunity to save a few bucks? I don't know. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. That we're a few days in and a law firm lays all the people off. It's just weird. 
I think those companies that are doing that are going to be in for a rude awakening. That their, their chance of recovery is going to be very slim because they're going to lose all their quality people. Those people are not going to be, if they do come back to work, I think a lot of them are probably going to feel like they've been, you know, kind of discarded. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them say it'll come back to work for them, but then they're going to be out looking for something new. I know I would. Like, look, you didn't, you didn't have enough funds to keep me on for like a couple of weeks while this kind of blew over, and all of a sudden, now you have money to hire me back. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't feel very comfortable working for that place. Like, it doesn't take much for the wind to blow the wrong direction, and these guys are out of business, and here I am banking my livelihood on that. Think. Well, this is what happens in recession in general. Is we, you know, the, the free market weeds out a lot of stuff. There's going to be so much darn fraud with this. I hope there isn't, but it sure seems like there's going to be so much fraud that comes with this this um, payment protection program. And you know, everybody who's just, just like, oh, just get the get the PPP and keep your people on. I said, well, if you were struggling cash flow wise. You know, I've been lucky in that you guys keep buying stuff. But if you were as a corporation struggling, um, you know, we're not getting any money anytime soon. I still haven't even been able to submit it yet. Who the heck knows what the heck's going to happen? It's really odd, though, the whole thing. I feel like I'm living in some bizarro world. Okay, wipe the fender. Remember, we need to chase other adjacent panels. Make sure you don't have any, you're pushing onto the next panel and then forgetting about it and ending up with a high spot and ending up negating all this work we just did. Man, this truck came out so good. So much better than I thought it would. It's really great. Yeah, so I've talked about this a lot. I've been, especially on the inside of the hex, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this day by day, case by case, instead of just doing what everybody else is doing because everybody else is doing it. I mean, if that were the case, then I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. I'd be working a job somewhere. So instead of just following the herd, I'm going to write my own darn path. And so I'm making decisions as it makes sense, not just, you know, the governor said to do this. Well, what does the governor know? He doesn't know anything. Nobody knows anything. So the Europeans are yelling at me on the comments. Just stay home. I said, well... It's not that simple. It's not as simple as that. It doesn't need to be that simple. You know, you're listening to like the, this, this, you know, the, the state of, what was it, North Dakota or South Dakota, the governor was talking about, look, you know, we're, we're in a different situation than New York City, so we need to react. We need to respond accordingly. We just not need to do what Washington, D.C. is doing. It's a different country almost. So let's just use some logic here and think through this rather than just making these blanket gut reactions to everything. I don't know, what do I know? I'm just using critical thinking. And then you just have to have thick skin on YouTube. Again, I'm not gonna listen to what you're telling me to do anyway. So uh, I'm not gonna get bent out of shape when you tell me to do it, because I'm not gonna listen. I'm gonna do what makes sense when it makes sense. And I'm sure many of you are going to yell at me in the comments on this, but whatever. Say what you want. You don't know either. Well, the experts. Well, the experts don't know either. Otherwise, we wouldn't be in this predicament. So, how about we just take our time and think through this? Does that seem reasonable? Anyway, I don't really see any people anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'm excited to coat this piece here. Let's see if it comes out a little better. Gosh, it's so much harder to coat a white car than it is another one because you can't freaking see anything. You just have to be really diligent about staying organized. So let's see, what else can I talk about to get you all riled up? Yeah, I mean, to, to me it just comes down to a simple, let's make intelligent decisions. And, and I get, I, I actually applaud the, uh, the concept that it would just make these blanket statements of, you know, everybody just stay home. It's just a better, better overall idea, concept. 
and then you know the vast majority of the people if they take heed to that then you know we have less risk you know so that's basically what we're doing but a slightly modified version of that so don't give me all this crap about you're not essential well, i am essential i'm essential to the people that work for me and so i've detached them from society that's enough it's more than enough we're, we're doing our part times 10 so all this deep deep talk while polishing and uh, coding a car truck truck oh, boy yeah so got to work on getting those compressors you know i got to spend some a lot of time with them you know doing this working on this so getting the compressor packages built out as well as finishing up i guess hq will never be finished but yeah, i want to move the pressure washer over here i want to uh finish the airline install and all that stuff you know just taking one project one day at a time because i'm again i'm editing all of the videos because uh, those guys are working on these bigger projects and it would take so much more time and energy to get the con get the uh to get all the content to them than it is to just do it myself so the polishing yanked off most of the water spots and just kind of oxidation on this and now all i'm doing is going and applying a layer of csl and hopefully this keeps it a little darker and richer this is kind of starting to fade a bit you know i've never been a huge fan of this bar you know the front bumpers of these trucks no matter what you do to them whether you leave them stock they always just look a little off or if you do something like this where it looks like you have a real dainty chin i don't know but this was on and charles did this and i'm uh sticking with it yeah i think this is gonna look really nice this will probably be the last the last detail before we do something different someday when it's you know i don't want to have a 150,000 mile truck where michelle's ended up stranded on the side of the road occasionally i don't want that i also don't want to be fixing it all the time so yeah that looks nice. An EXO will actually make this look even better. Just not really sure how long this will hold up on this type of paint, but it looks a whole lot deeper, darker, richer than before. Okay. So I'm gonna keep on this process with CSL. As we're working through the coating, Rex is working on that now. And so I want to address this area. Just beat up. There's a little bit of polish on it. It's a little bit of, um, this is all black plastic. There's a little bit of kind of hazing to it. So we're going to try to clean it really deeply with some 309, or I'm sorry, number 39, not 309. That's something else. And um, so I'm going to clean it with a, with a brush and some heavy duty vinyl cleaner. And then we're gonna do some solution finish, let that cure, and then tomorrow we'll coat this. Uh, so just the top plastic section of the bumper here. So I wanna show you what I was planning to do there. Not planning, do it. Let's do it. Okay. This is big because I was in a groove. Got some music going, and now I gotta turn it on camera back on. But this is how I, this is how I survive. So I'm gonna spray some of this on here. Okay, some on here. This is like, just finding this stuff at the trip to McGuire's is worth the trip alone. I love this stuff. Although I'm running out. I don't know if I have any more over there. Hope I do. This is a nice quality cleaning. I tried wiping down with IPA, but that didn't really do anything.
brush in here. And you can just see the dirt lift off of this. Some areas it turns brown. towels and wipe it clean. Oh yeah. I don't even know if I need solution finish now. Can't hurt to put it on and let it penetrate and kind of bring back the life. Key is we got all the all the white gunk out of it. Way better, dude. I think I can just coat right over this right now. Yeah, come look. Came up really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, like brand new. Yeah. Uh, if you put the coating, it looks so much better too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. You gotta get this stuff. I got it in the store, I think, I hope. I think we got some. I need to go grab some more. These darn color lock brushes. I use for everything. I might just jump right into my M3 this weekend. <laughs> just go. Make sure I hate detailing. I got the trunk. I got the IR lamp. What I'm going to do on the M3 is I'm going to can do. You, I just got a shipment of Geon stuff. So I'm going to use can coat. So I'm going to get all polish it, get all the water spots off, and then just do an application of can coat and then make sure the water spots don't come back. And in like a couple of months, then I'll just do a quick little finishing polish, clean up, you know, a little decon and clean up, and then, uh, then coat it, coat it. You know, didn't do CSL. Yep, I'd say that uh, does the trick. Let me clean this other side and I'll come back and we'll coat this thing. All right, so let's do a little bit of racer. I'm gonna clean up my mess back here that I oversprayed. So we're about to coat this tailgate. I just wanna get the residue left over off from the McGuire's. And then I'll just coat this here and call it done. Wow, man, it came out great. Holy crap. I gotta stop buying stuff, new stuff, and just fix it. I should have learned my lesson on the darn Corvette. I bought a whole new interior and then I learned how to sand the Alcantara. I like new stuff though. That's why I just need to go back to buying new cars. That's going to be my new game. No more stinky old cars. The problem is there aren't any new cars that I want outside of Porsches. You know, I, uh, I've been thinking about it. Maybe I should get Michelle a Land Cruiser next. Big old Toyota Land Cruiser. All right, so we'll take this. Put some CSL on there and just coat it and this will make it nice and rich looking. I've said this many, many times in videos, but I've used all these fancy trim and wheel coatings and all this crap. Just use the darn flagship coating on everything. <laughs> I'd coat the darn refrigerator next. That's what, uh, John Clevin's got me talked into doing that from uh, Metropolitan Detail. He says, you need to coat your countertops and your fridge. I said, ah, yeah, that's a good idea. I need to do that. So if I'm coating my countertops and my fridge, 
it should be good enough to coat my M3 too. Yeah, this is like brand new. Dang it, it's so good. Fresh and clean. EXO will make it look even, even nicer. Still doesn't look quite like new, but much better than it was an hour ago. Or 20 minutes ago, I guess it didn't take me an hour. There's like no excess to wipe off. Nice. Call that a wrap. Yeah, let me show you. So I remember you saw that a minute ago. Looks like brand new. At least it does look like new up here. Yeah, good people. Good, 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 good. All right, we're gonna keep coating. So I'll come back to you either later this evening or tomorrow. I like to let CSL wait or sit for many hours. We'll also do the windows and stuff too. So we'll, we'll kind of see how that goes in the interior. But yeah, I'll come back to you when it's time to, oh man, it's so slick. When it's time to do uh, XO and you know talk you through some more stuff to get me in trouble. Anyway, catch you, uh, catch you shortly. Mm -hmm.